All right, well, hi everyone. Um, we are Space Resources Localization Team, and that is uh, Ben Wu, Ross Potter. Um, they're not on stage. Can you stand up for a second, Ben, Ross? These two guys. Uh, and I'm myself, Philip Ludovic. Uh, and I am Andy Chung. OK, so so our team has been focused on answering um, one question. And that's a question which I think everybody in this room at some point has asked themselves. Namely, where am I? So if you answer that question, basically, that's localization. That's what it means. And today on Earth, we kind of take this for granted. You know, if I want to know where I am, I just pull up my phone. Within a few seconds, I know exactly where I am to within a few meters. Okay? And it hasn't always been this way. This has taken millennia of human exploration, cartography, technological advancement to get to the point where I can take a handheld device out of my pocket, I can have it communicate with satellites orbiting the Earth, and it will tell me exactly where I am and where I can get coffee. So even without GPS, here on Earth, we have, um, we have landmarks. Okay? They might be natural or man-made. And we have maps, good maps, so we know where they are. To the extent that if you see this, you would know where you were, I, I hope. <laughs> uh, uh, likewise, yeah, pretty good, right, so far. But what if you saw this? Or this? I heard moon. OK, so if you said moon, either internally or actually verbally, um, yes, you're correct. Uh, and you've managed to localize yourself within 5,500 kilometers. <laughs> um, so what's the problem here? The problem is, once you leave Earth, there's no GPS, right? Um, not much in the way of landmarks. You know, there's a few rocks here and there. Um, and you may not even have good maps. Uh, but you still want to know where you are, because you know, humanity is, or you know, humans, are a space-faring species, OK? But if you want to move from that one small step to confident strides out there, um, we're going to have to solve this problem. And to some extent, we have. OK, we have rovers on Mars. We have rovers on the moon. Okay? And we know where they are. That's not a problem. The problem is it's both time and labor intensive. Okay? And it's a bit like, I mean, it's not exactly like, but it's a bit like using a compass and a map. Um, but we have a term for this kind of thing at NASA FDL. And that term is old school. <laughs> All right. So we want to go away from kind of compass and map to something a bit more uh, automated, a bit quicker, a better way to find out where you are. Uh, and actually, what we want to do is be able to take pictures from the surface of the moon or from Mars and immediately know where we are on that planet or moon. And this is a pretty tough problem. Um, but you know, we've got a good team, smart guys, uh, excellent mentors, and all these industry partners you see in the bottom right. And we're based in Silicon Valley. And we think we found a solution. The solution is cats. <laughs> Lots of cats. Uh, well, and it's also data. <laughs> it really is, but first it's cats. <laughs> um, and for everyone else in the room, it's also dogs. OK. So the thing is, in recent years, no. Yeah, OK. Well, there we go again. Data again. <laughs> in recent years, uh, computer vision has advanced to the point where we can feed an image of a cat or a dog into a deep neural network. And it will tell us with 99% confidence or 97% confidence, this is a cat or a dog. Okay? And oh, this is, first, of all, first of all, it's kind of amazing. Um, but what's it got to do with well, that's right? So what we want to do is we will take these Neural networks, which are literally trained on thousands of images of cats and dogs and other things, um, and tell it, you know what? Forget about the cats and dogs, but remember all the stuff you learned that got you, got you to the point where you could decide it was a cat or a dog. And then we're going to retrain that network 
for what we want it to do. And that is to take a, take a picture from the surface of the moon and tell us where we are. So you can think of it a bit like this. I'm from the UK. We drive on the left. I can come to the US, and with a bit of ray training, I can drive on the right, normally. <laughs> uh, now, of course, you know, classifying cats and dogs is quite different from going from a photo on the moon to where you are on the moon. So that's maybe more like, I'm from the UK, I can drive on the left, here, fly the space shuttle. Okay, so maybe it's like that. Um, <laughs> but the point is, the, the more difference there is in the task, the more retraining you need. And so if we want to retrain a cat and dog network to go to uh, localization on the moon, we need, and this time we really do need it, data, right? Uh, and we need lots of it. And the problem with that is we don't have that much data uh, on the moon, right? So well, we can make it in a virtual environment. So we set up a virtual environment to generate data. Uh, and once you've done that, the beauty is you can make one photo, or virtual photo, uh, you can make lots of them. And we made lots and lots and lots and lots. In fact, we ended up making 2.4 million photos from the surface of our virtual moon. So I'll hand you over to Phil. Thank you. So uh, essentially, uh, overnight, we ended up going from uh, a data poor team to an FDL data rich team um, with all the problems that entailed, including physically driving a hard drive to a data center. Um, OK, but what kind of images do we actually take? So uh, for our premise, we set up a rover that takes four images, uh, one to the front, one to the right, one to the back, mm, come on, and uh, one to the left as well. And uh, now, in order to be able to compare these images to a satellite view, um, we then went on and uh, we reprojected these images onto a flat plane. Um, so that we actually get to the point where these look similar to what a satellite view would look like. So essentially, when you get to this point, um, you can then get your rover to drive in your environment. And uh, on the bottom left, you see what the rover would see as his kind of satellite view. And on the bottom right, you see what an actual satellite would, look, uh, would see in this environment. Now, you're going to tell me um, these features still look quite different. Um, so for a human, it's still quite difficult to make a, the comparison of these features on the bottom left to the bottom right. But essentially, uh, with neural networks, because it only looks at the features in the images, it can actually um, tell uh, the comparisons in these images, and it can actually um, tell us if the image on the left is the one on the right. So essentially, what we feed our networks is the image that our rover produces here on the left, and then we go into our map, and we search through our complete map um, to find where this, this green spot will be. So the green spot will be, uh, that's the actual place where the rover is. And then our neural network gives us the five best matches in this map um, to uh, where this rover could be. So essentially what we're doing, we can support um, an operator in localizing a rover. So today, uh, even teams at NASA, they need about 12 hours to localize a rover uh, on the surface of Mars when it lands. Um, but essentially what we're aiming for is to support this team by giving these, them these uh, best matches, which only takes a couple of seconds for us. So um, what's next? So the next step, uh, we've done this in a virtual environment. Now the best thing to do is we want to move on to a real environment. Uh, we want to move on to actual Mars data. The satellite images that we have currently on Mars are actually good enough in resolution to uh, what we did in our virtual environment. Um, so we actually want to apply this practically. Secondly, we want to improve our reprojections because currently the reprojections we're using are very basic. And essentially, this could be improved a lot by using 3D reprojections. Um, but again, FDL is eight weeks and uh, time is limited. So that's all that we managed to do so far. But we want to extend this in the future. And in order to do that as well, we want to make available this data set because essentially a lot of time we spend in FDL here was making this data set, and we want to uh, get other people to use this data to go straight into the machine learning and not having to deal with the data generation. So, but that was our next step. So now we also have a task for you. We want you to come out to our booth and actually see how difficult it is to localize on the moon. So 
Um, we set up a challenge where we teleport you on the moon in a VR headset, and we'll give you a map, and you can try for yourself if you can localize on the moon. <laughs> okay, so in summary, um, so our challenge was to localize on the moon, so um, to find out where we are, and essentially we managed to do that so we can support our operators uh, into finding a rover location much quicker. And then as a side pro product, we also managed to create a large data set that can actually be used now um, to do a training for uh, absolute localization. And that's our team. Thank you very much.